Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Oliver King and this channel is all about how to make money from your art. And for me, this includes things like photography, videography, and graphic design. Today, we're just going to be looking at how to create a digital background. What I mean by that is certain images that you've probably seen used as website backgrounds or sort of just interesting little graphics that people can create. And typically what they have is a dark background and some glowing elements in the foreground. So they just make for interesting images and conceptual designs. And so we're just gonna go over some basic ways to do that on Photoshop today and just how to create a little composition that you can utilize for whatever you need it for. And for my Shutterstock or for my stock photography type people, I'm also gonna show you how to export that and upload it to Shutterstock as an illustration as well. So this is gonna be a beginner sort of tutorial for how to create glowing elements and manipulate shapes within Photoshop. And since I'm a beginner at this, don't expect any expert grade skills. So we're just gonna manipulate what we have to work with and hopefully create an interesting something to export when we're finished with it. So let's jump into the computer and get right into it. All right, so here we are now in the computer. And so we're gonna go ahead and create our composition. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna title this tutorial. Oops, if we can spell to tutorial and we're going to make it glow. So we're going to select 6000 width by 4000 height. So this is one I created earlier and this one is similar to another one that I had seen on Shutterstock so I just used that as kind of a template for what I was creating just to see if I could actually create it. And so this is how it turned out. So mine's slightly different from the one that I mimicked because I added numbers as well. So we'll go through how to do that as we move along. So let's jump into our new one now. And what we're going to go ahead and do first is we're just going to click on the rectangle tool. We're going to create our rectangle. We're going to go 6,000 and we're going to go 4,000. So we get our rectangle and then I'm just going to move it into the center of the screen so that it occupies the, mi the middle of the page. We're going to turn off our stroke in this menu over here. And then I want to actually turn this into a gradient. So this is the fill. Oops. So this is the fill button here and we want to change this to gradient to create we have dark blue and black. Actually, I kind of like the black there, so we're going to keep that. So we have just our gradient here. And you can move this around a little bit, but I like the way it's set up right now, so we're just going to go ahead and work with this. So we're going to go in here and we're going to select our ellipse tool, and we are going to hold down shift and create our first element, which is a sphere or a circle, I guess. And so we're going to pull that to the middle of the screen and again, turn off the stroke and we're going to keep this color actually, because I think that will work well for what we want it. And the first thing that we're going to do is just make uh, a few of these. So we're going to click on this and we're going to hold down alt or option if you're using a Mac and we're just going to hold and drag. So we have one, two, three, four. And I have snap to fit set on in my smart guides. So they all just snap into a little place here and that should be your default setting. So we have our four shapes and let's link them together. So we wanna turn this into a singular entity. So what we're going to do is click on the bottom ellipse in our layers uh, panel here. And then we're going to hold shift and click on the ellipse copy up here. And I'm just going to right click and go up to uh, convert to smart object. So now they're all just gonna operate as one little unit. And if I want to resize this, I can hit control T and then I can just transform the little beads that I've created. So the next thing I really want to learn how to do is to create a glow effect with these. So I'm going to go ahead and right click again on my smart object that I've created and go up to blending options. In blending options, we're going to go all the way down to our outer glow. You might not have all of the styles that I've included here, but this should be within your blending options and you're going to be able to customize each of these settings. So we want an outer glow that's going to make our object glow a little bit and you will have to select the color I want a nice light color so if I chose something even slightly lighter than this which I might want and if I wanted it to be a little bit brighter I could up the opacity and I want to make sure that my blend mode is set to light uh, the other things you could do if you really want to spread it out you could do this you could increase the spread I kind of like a minor spread with mine and you could also increase the size if you were so inclined so you can modify those depending on how natural you want something to look so we're gonna select OK and now that we have our glowing element, I'm going to resize this by hitting Control T and holding Shift. We're just going to rotate it so it's a little bit of a bead of light here. So we've got that. And hit Control T again and just size these down a little bit because I'm going to create a few lines of these I think would be great. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have our collective ellipses. So what I might want to do again is create this into another smart object just by grouping them together. So I might hit the bottom ellipse here and go up to the top ellipse, hit a right click 
and I'm just going to convert these all into a smart, uh, smart object again. So now this rope of beads is another entity. So I can click on this, hit Control T, and I could resize this, move it around a little bit, and uh, I'm just going to create a few of these. So how you duplicate things again is just by hitting Alt, wait for the double arrow, click, hold, drag, click, hold, drag. Alright, so we have a couple of those right now, and you can see kind of what I'm going for here. Uh, this is the finished product, I guess as close to finish as I've gotten this one so far. Uh, but you can see what I'm aiming for. So what I might want to do with some of these is I might want to hit Control T and resize specific ones. So maybe I want some smaller ones, maybe I want some that are slightly bigger. So hit this guy, T, double click, Control T, and we're just going to size this one up so it goes off panel. And then with this one, I'm going to control T, size it down. So I'm just going to manipulate these a little bit. I think that's okay for now, just for the purposes of the tutorial. And maybe I want to duplicate this one one more time, just so it goes off screen. Oops. There we go. So that one goes off screen. So we have a good little central element to work with here. We're going to go back to our ellipse tool, hit shift, draw another object, hit V, and we're just going to take away the stroke and I'm just gonna maintain my colors because messing around with this would be time-consuming so one of the other things I could do to make my objects more interesting create more a bead of light sort of look is to change the opacity we're set at 100% right now drop it down so now this one is a little bit less opaque and so we are going to be able to manipulate this and create copies so if I hit uh, alt again and just drag and create a copy you can see how you can create like an interesting bokeh sort of effect that you could with a camera. So beads of light, and you kind of get that Venn diagram sort of look. So some of them will intersect with each other and overlap. And then maybe what I want to do is just hold a couple of these, change the opacity around a little bit, just so that there's some variation in my design. So what I'm going to do is just group these all together into a smart object once more. And we're just going to go ahead and convert them into a smart object. So we've got that. So we can move this around just by creating duplications of it, adding a little bit more of a feeling of a backdrop or a sort of a frame to everything. You might want some of them on screen, some of them off screen, so it looks more continuous. So we'll do that a little bit, create a few little light here and there. So you can see how I've used this over here. I've definitely decreased the opacity, so the ones I have in this case are a lot more bright. I might want to choose to just decrease the opacity of certain ones. Maybe I just like a slightly duller look on the sides and a slightly brighter look in the center just to draw the eye more to my composition in the middle. That seems like a smart choice. And maybe I'll get rid of some of these. Looks adequate for now. So the next thing we might want to include, we know how to make objects glow through blending them out, uh, but maybe we want to throw some numbers in there too. So let's go ahead and grade some numbers. So I'm going to hit T, that's my shortcut for text. And then we're just going to create a nice long box for text. And I'm going to go 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. I might need to increase my size here a little bit just so that they're visible. There we go. So you can see those now. And one of the things you're going to need to do with text is convert it to a smart object as well. So we're going to convert that to a smart object. And then this is going to be something that we can manipulate and move around. I've chosen this numbers pattern just to symbolize binary. And so I'm just going to hit Alt, move this around, I'm going to create a few little copies, and maybe I hit Control T, do some resizing, put some objects back here. I'm going to stack up a few of these just so we can have a look. So I'm going to manipulate these, and we're going to fast forward through this part. Now let's say you have an object that's slightly bigger like this in the corner. Let's say I want to make it feel as though it were closer to me so that I had a bit more depth to my compositions. What I could do is blur it out. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur. We're going to select Gaussian Blur. And I think about an 11 pixel blur in this case will be adequate for what I want. So you can see it's kind of created this little blur effect here. I'm going to hit Alt. I'm going to click on this and hit Alt and just create another co a couple copies of this just so we have a couple numbers that seem like they're a little closer to the screen. So we're starting to get a little bit more of a feel of depth of certain things being closer. And then maybe these ones I want to shrink down a little bit. Just create a couple more copies. So hold down that Alt key. And once again, you can change the opacity on these just to give some variation to your composition. The more variation you have with something like this, the more interesting it's going to look overall. So we're going to just modify a few of these things here just by changing the opacity, 
just so that there is that level of variation. And since this is an illustration and not a vector, we don't have to worry about uh, making sure that everything's accessible to the end user. Oops, I didn't want to do that, so we'll just keep that one going for now. So I'm just gonna leave this as it is for now, and then we're gonna switch back to our more well-cultivated one. I've spaced everything out on this one. There's a little bit more depth to it. You can see different things are different sizes. I've made certain things glow, certain things blur out a little bit more, varied my opacity, and messed around with different circle sizes. So there's a lot more variation and intrigue in this picture. And so it's gonna be a bit more of a financially viable background for somebody to utilize. And so what I wanna do now is just export it as a JPEG and that way I can use it basically as a picture. So we're gonna go ahead and say file export and we're gonna go export as and wait for Photoshop. Give us our options here. We don't wanna select PNG, we want a JPEG and we wanna make sure we're maintaining our image size and we're gonna go ahead and say export all. Now, if you're a Shutterstock contributor, you will recognize this page and if you're interested in selling your images, you can go on here and sell them. So we've just uploaded this as a regular JPEG and just one thing to note when we try to upload these and to tag them and all that jazz, one important thing to remember is that since it's a JPEG and since it's not a photograph, we need to check illustration instead of commercial editorial or instead of photo and editorial or anything like that, it just needs to be an illustration and it needs to be commercial. So this is something that we've created and uh, we might call it something like digital background and tag it as such. So that is definitely something that we have ready to go. All right, so I hope the video was useful to you and I hope you got something out of it and just learning how to manipulate simple things, make them glow, add a little bit more of another skill set into your pocket just for uh, yourself as a developing artist. If you have access to Photoshop, it's always nice to utilize that. And it's a little bit more finicky, I think, to deal with than say Illustrator. But the nice thing about Photoshop is it allows you to manipulate opacity Capacities. So with vectors, you're not always able to do that. You have to be a little bit more careful about it if you want to upload those so that people can use them. But as an illustration, you have a few more options available to you so that you can manipulate your shapes and uh, use different effects on the graphics that you're trying to create. So there's definitely a time and place to use this. And I think it's really uh, interesting and I think more marketable to be able to at least use some of these skills. So hope that was useful to you. I hope you got something out of the video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and have a great week.